Hey, it's Jordan Sheridan. I am here in Amelia, Virginia, and I'm here with uh, Pastor Paul Wilson. You've been a pastor for, you know, four decades, but you've specifically been in Buckingham County, which is about an hour and a half from here for uh, about how long? Going on 20 years. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been covering the Mountain Valley Pipeline uh, all week. We interviewed uh, Red and her daughter, Minor, who were the mother and daughter who climbed up the trees. Uh, to basically stop the pipeline from going through their property. This pipeline, uh, Mountain Valley Pipeline, as well as the Atlantic Coast Pipeline are, are natural gas pipelines that are going through a uh, big part of the Appalachian Trail. But it's also going through uh, the community that you work in and, and you know, are, represent spiritually, uh, Buckingham County. Uh, you are the pastor of a really historic church, so I wanted to start there because this pipeline, Atlantic Coast Pipeline, is literally putting a mega compressor station, uh, natural gas pipelines. They have compressor stations which help distribute the gas, uh, repressurize the gas. It's kind of like the heart valve of a, of a pipeline, and they have shockingly decided to put it through a poor African American community. Tell me about the history of uh, Union Hill, uh, the churches you represent, and uh, everything the audience should know. I pastored two churches, Union Hill and Union Grove. Uh, Union Grove split from Union Hill, uh, I guess maybe 75, 80 years ago. And the churches are like, they're actually one mile apart. And we have reunited those two churches since I've been there. And uh, uh, it's a historic church. Uh, the Union Hill Church is actually the mother church. And it's been in existence since the late 1860s, since the end of the Civil War. It's a church of uh, freed Africans, uh, Americans uh, from slavery and from the local plantations. And uh, most of the folk have the same names as a lot of the plantation owners. Mm -hmm. And so there's a rich history there. And most of those families, you know, they've been there for generations. They have burial grounds. There's some slave burial grounds in the area. And the area is also, in relation to the compressor station, is 85% or better African-American. Mm -hmm. It's my understanding that the pipeline company uh, basically seized on one specific area that uh, the Mountain Valley, excuse me, the Atlantic Coast Pipeline uh, met the mm -hmm. existing Transco Pipeline. Mm -hmm. There was already a pipeline that went through uh, this area, and they essentially... Uh, bought this land uh, where Atlantic Coast and Transco met um, that was a former plantation, mm -hmm. is that correct? Uh, yes. The, um, the Transco line runs east-west and they proposed Atlantic Coast Pipeline north-south. And uh, so this is across, uh, and there were two other areas in the county that were suitable. And I specifically asked the question, why did you choose this particular location, uh, this particular area, community. And the answer that I received from the Dominion representative was location, location, location. And so, of course, that got me to thinking, location, location, location. Well, I could understand where one, uh, the, the, they needed to put that compressor station where the lines crossed. And because they're going to, they're going to transfer gas, you know, from one line to the other. And it's also for, for future things that they're not even talking about. And also there is a, a suitable highway, the main highway. But it just so happens that our church, both of our churches, are within the uh, what we call the ground zero uh, blast area. Uh, so if anything goes wrong, if anything happens down the road with this particular compressor station, well, everything for about a mile is just gone. Mm -hmm. just wiped off. This is a mega compressor station. Started out at 33,000 horsepower. Now it's approaching 57,000 horsepower. And even after they, uh, uh, if this thing comes to futrition, uh, they can still add other compressor stations. Uh, excuse me. Add other compressors at this station. It is our belief and our understanding as well that uh, that the area was targeted because it's a minority, uh, you know, area, and uh, and and traditional uh, or 
is part of, of, of normal operations that when you do these kinds of projects that they'll always put in uh, locations where there is little representation. Uh, people are, are basically poor. Uh, they're not considered so much in the mainstream. Uh, we're in a rural area. Uh, there are, you know, there are some educated folk there, but the ratio. And what they also did was now federal law says that they can't really come there in our area. But how they skirted around it was they took the population of our community and spread it throughout the whole county. And so instead of being, uh, they diluted us by, oh, I knew that number right off the top of my head, but I think it was well over 20%. Well, I was listening before I came uh, to some of the reporting that's been done on this. And the oil companies, you know, they were surveying how many people live mm -hmm. within a specific uh you know, yardage or specific area. And they said, oh, there's like 25 people within a couple hundred um, yards or something like that. Not a couple hundred yards, but there was 25 people within a few couple blocks. And then uh, a reporter came around and did it, and it was 166. Six, right. So it seems like they purposely uh, basically tried to make it like not a lot of people live here. Purposely and intentionally. Mm -hmm. You know, even all of the reports of the Dominion, and when I speak of Dominion, it always represents the industry. Uh, they purposely and intentionally um, dilute the numbers. And this, you know, it's, it's, it's uh, misrepresentation. Mm -hmm. And they're experts at doing it. I mean, they have people on, you know, these are folk who are paid, on, you know, and this is what they do, and this is what their job definition is. Mm -hmm. And they become experts in it. And so then there are people like us, you know, everything that we do is, you know, extra time, volunteerism, or whatever you have to do uh, uh, to get the message out. Um, they practice what I call the veracity of truth. Uh, they present some truths, but they present it uh, the way that they want the outcome to be, and whereas we just tell the truth, you know, uh, which is the real thing, uh, they don't, the minion, the industry, uh, they don't tell of the real inherent dangers, they minimize it, you know, by statistics, but they don't mention about the real danger that's to the community, um, uh, birth defects, um, uh, people getting sick. Uh, nosebleeds, uh, COPD and related problems, uh, the intentional uh, threat to to water. Uh, and if you're not familiar with compressor stations, they're known, even the smaller ones are known for uh, pollution. Right. Uh, and people around compressor stations have had more autoimmune illnesses, mm -hmm. cancers, uh, and this one in particular, the most natural gas pipelines have a compressor station, you know, every... 60 to 100 every miles. Every 60 to 100 mm -hmm. miles. This one is... Uh, well, the pipeline is 600 mm -hmm. miles, so this is at the 300 mile marker. Mm -hmm. So this is the only compressor slated for Virginia. And um, we believe that the reason why they targeted our area was because it's minority, it's a rural county, it's a poor county. And they didn't have to deal with one community, one county. And whereas if they had done like they usually do, every uh, 60 to 100 miles, uh, they would have had to deal with quite a few communities. Mm -hmm. uh, also, uh, the other two areas that were slated um, for a potential, com for this com potential compressor station, those two areas were predominantly uh, white. Okay, but they targeted our community because I think they felt that, uh, you know, it's traditional. Well, it would be less interest, you know. Uh, maybe some of the other folk wouldn't rally to, to really help us, but uh, they were, they underestimated the whole situation. Mm -hmm. Also, the effect that it's going to have on an uh, area like Yogoville and, um, uh, uh Yogaville is a religious center um, for uh, for yoga uh, on the eastern shore. Uh, 
I think they have over 10,000 people that visit there every year. They have several shrines. It's a beautiful place in the mountains. And uh, if you're a spiritual person, as soon as you walk on those grounds, you, you can feel the, the aura. Uh, you can feel that spiritual uh, buzz, so to speak. Also, another thing about uh, the pipeline and the compressor station, the, the, there is a degree of vibration that will come from that compressor station. And um, the not, Dominion Delta. Not to station, mention just the, just the noise. Right, the noise and the pollution from the blowdowns. Mm -hmm. But this vibration um, has been proven to have an effect on, on people now, over a period of time. It has a very negative effect. Um, one thing about these pipelines and compressor stations, uh, there are pipelines all over the country. And Virginia certainly has hundreds of them. But the majority of these pipelines were put in 50, 60 years ago when uh, no one knew anything. There was no real data, you know. And um, But now that the data has been collected um, with Dominion, and again, I say that Dominion represents the industry, um, they twist the facts, okay? And um, they refute everything that that comes out about it. And so they play, they're playing a game. It's, mm -hmm. it's a game. Uh, their whole motive is profit. It's about money. It's about corporate greed. And that's the, that's the trap that we're in. Um, it's about the power that the industry has. It's about how they have uh, effectively, um, um, from political contributions, uh, for campaign contributions to politicians. Uh, in the very, well, halfway through this whole thing, when I was addressing the, uh, the county government of Buckingham uh, in the permit requirement for the county, uh, I simply told them that they were in over their heads. They didn't even know what was happening. Because Dominion, uh, as part of their propaganda, Okay, is that uh, they expect for most people not to do any research. Uh, they present themselves as the experts. And, you know, they, they give you all of this information and it sounds so good, you know, and it sounds, oh, it must be true because this is what Dominion is saying. And, and they're in the energy business, you know. But when you, when you do some checking on your own, you find it's a very different story. I'll give you a good little case in point of what they do. Now, they have a, a, an, an advertisement now that 17,000 jobs <laughs> are coming because of this pipeline. Uh, yeah, 17,000 jobs, temporary, you know, uh, for maybe two and a half years during the construction phase. Uh, this is just something that's just passing through our community. And, uh, and Dominion tries to present itself as a good neighbor uh, uh, good people to do business with, but what they're doing is they're ruining communities, people's lives. Um, they're using eminent domain, uh, and eminent domain is supposed to be, you know, for a. Uh, uh, it's not supposed to be for a profit uh, purpose for a private company, and they're taking it to an extreme by saying this is for the public good. You know, my idea, from what I've always learned, and uh, and I have about 10, 11 years of college, so I think I know what I'm talking about here. But um, what I've always understood eminent domain was for is when if, if a school was needed or a fire station, you know, or maybe some something that served the public good.